there it goes. Oh, we're already off to a great start. I love purple pixel. <laughs> Good day, peeps. Today is launch day for a lot of Apple products, not the least of which is the one here on the kitchen table. Let's check out the all new Mac Studio. Okay, this is gonna be in freehand camera style. I don't have a tripod for my phone, so we're just gonna to have to wing this the best that we can. So I apologize if the video gets a little messy. This is obviously by no means any kind of a professionally made video here. This is about the best that I can do. In fact, the fact that I'm recording in 4K today is a bit of a miracle, because I wanna push the capabilities of this computer. So let's check it out. We have the usual Apple makes it easy pull tab on their cardboard packaging even. So, I'm just gonna eat this box open. And already I can see the little nylon handle. Oh my gosh. That's actually a bigger box than I was expecting. I'm not joking. That's pretty beefy. Wow. That's a big box. <laughs> Let's get it out. It's a fairly firm handle. The old cardboard off the table here whatever so there be the retail packaging for the mac studio i gotta say this is quite the unit now for those wondering about the particular specs of my unit i'm not sure where they list them oh they, they're down here on the bottom of the box okay i didn't go too crazy i just went and got myself the base model because that's really all i need so it's got 32 gigs of unified memory half a terabyte of ssd which I can always expand later. And it's got the M1 Max chip with the 24 core GPU. So absolutely by no means anything fancy, you could probably get a MacBook Pro with this chip, no problem. But I decided that I would like a chip like that in desktop form. I do plan to keep an M1 MacBook around for portability sake, but this will really fit the bill a lot nicer than my Mac mini did. Not to say that the Mac mini was a slouch, but I just needed more than eight gigs of RAM, if you know what I mean. So let's not put it off any longer. Get another green pull tarot, uh, pull tarot, pull arrow rather. I'm doing a really good job of doing this with one hand. Somehow. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, you have to like put the box down like this and then it should just open right up. As long as the handle's not in the way, obviously. I'm struggling with one hand. Designed by Apple in California up there on the top. This is all recycled packaging, if I'm not mistaken. So this apparently just comes out like this and kind of just like isolates the computer. That's just crazy. Like that thing. Wow. That thing is tiny. Well, I mean, it's big. Definitely bigger than a Mac Mini. It's also, ow, trapping my finger underneath. Then here is the power cable sitting underneath. From what I saw, like this is all isolated and it's like shock absorbing, which is just crazy packaging. You do get your braided power cable, nice black nylon like material. And it's got like the Mickey Mouse style power connector on it. As far as up above, I'm not sure there's too much in the way of stuff, but Try to check it out the best that I can. I mean, obviously it's just gonna be the usual. So I got Mac Studio, which is just like your little quick start guide to show you the ports and a little glyph of the Apple Studio display, which of course I didn't purchase cause I'm not gonna use one. Regulatory crap. And then we have a black Apple sticker, fairly large one too, actually, if you don't mind us opinion. And that is everything that is inside this little package. And no, I didn't order a polishing cloth because that's, I don't know, <laughs> I was going to do it for the lulls, but I decided not to because that just seems silly for a, an order like this. So now that just leaves us with the Mac Studio computer itself. What a big boy. Let me see if I can prop up my uh, phone camera here and we'll get it out of the paper. I didn't even see this thing on the back of it. It says, important, use requires acceptance of the software license terms, blah, 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 blah which we already knew that because, I mean, they plaid that on everything these days. So I think, yeah, it looks like this is just a pull-up tab from the front. So let me get that into the frame here for all it's worth. Or not. 
Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> That's cool how it like all unfurls like that. That's actually really clever packaging. I will give it to them for that. And there it be. It's not too heavy actually. And uh, definitely the size of it, like you have to look at it in person to kind of get a perspective of it. Now this overall, like the width and everything is basically the same size as the Mac Mini. It's just like two and a half times taller for those who don't have, have an idea as to how big this uh, machine is as far as the dimensions go. You have a power light on the front. In my machine's case, these are two uh, USB-C ports. They're just standard ports. They're not Thunderbolt 4 type ports. We do get an SD card slot on the front and then on the rear. Let me see if I can actually get this off of the wide angle lens here for you. Just move the camera a little bit to accommodate for that. So for rear IO, these are all Thunderbolt 4 USB type C ports there. So 40 gigabit per second per port, I believe, or something like that. 10 gig ethernet. We have the power input, two USB type A ports, or USB 3.2 Gen 1, if you really care to know. HDMI 2.0 and a pro audio jack, which is really just a headphone jack made for high impedance headphones as well. And our little power button, which eh, it's feeling a little clicky. And this massive stack here is just your cooling vent. Now, Initial impressions aside, like the size is actually pretty great. The one thing that I have complaints about, and the same thing goes for the Mac Mini as well, there's not really much isolation or shock absorption when you place it on a surface. So for example, let's just say I have it here on the table, just like the Mac Mini, I can kind of just like rotate it around. I've never understood why that's a design feature. I don't really like that. It's like, I wish that on the bottom, like they make this rubber foot that they put on the bottom of the machine a lot more, well, not that. But it's like, I wish that they would just make it to where you can't just easily twist it because it tends to happen a lot and it kind of bugs me. Anyways, so I'm going to go make some space for it on my desk and try to get a setup going. I've got to also set up a set of speakers since I've got some new speakers to hook up. Since I don't want to use the internal speaker of this computer, so it'll definitely take advantage of that audio jack on the rear. And then we'll fire this thing up and check it out. I'm not going to do too much in the way of first impressions because I have to install some software, but I'll at least show you guys around because, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's obligatory. All right, I think we're about ready to power this thing on. I just got it all connected here. And... Forgive the messy desk setup, it's just temporary. I eventually plan to switch out this uh, keyboard and mouse set with a different set. So I'm just having to tag team the desk space with my PC peripherals in the meantime, so you know how that goes. So I'm just gonna see if I can try to maximize room here. Now I don't know if this is gonna be the final setup for this thing, I just figured for now, for my initial use cases, this is how I'm going to put it on my desk. But we'll see what happens in the future. Anyways, I'm delaying the inevitable. Let's go ahead and juice this thing up. Let's hear that glorious bong. Just like that. Now, I hope my monitor works. I set this to HDMI. We'll see what happens here. There it goes. Oh, we're right after a great start. I love purple pixel. <laughs> All right, it looks like we got her going. Let's make sure that my stuff's working. And it does work. Okay, cool. So I want to select English. And I'll just pretty much go through this out-of-box experience because it's going to be the most boring part. And then I will pick back up when we're at the desktop. That's interesting that these don't come preloaded with macOS Monterey 12.3. That is very fascinating. I'm going to update this later. I just want to get this to the desktop. I just thought I'd point that out. I thought that was interesting. All right, there we are at the desktop. So we'll just do the obligatory go to about this Mac. And as you can see here, the old Mac Studio with the M1 Max and 32 gigs of memory. Holy crap. Apparently these ship on Mac OS 12.2, so this must be old stock or something like that. That's actually quite fascinating. Uh, so I guess that's something to keep in mind. These ship on 12.2. So if anybody from every Mac or whoever else in the future is watching, I guess there you go. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to run this software update and just get that out of the way. And then I'm going to preload some apps and then uh, from there I will form my opinion because obviously I got to get things going 
before I can actually, you know, use the machine in the first place and whatnot. So we'll just have to go from there. Holy bonkers, that's a big update. Good thing my internet section up that slow. Well, it used to be because if it was my old internet, then we'd be here literally the rest of the evening downloading this and I couldn't do anything else on the internet while I was doing that because it'd be so slow. So yeah, thankfully I got fiber. All right, I have the video edited up to this point, so I thought I would cut in and give a sort of a first impressions sort of thing before I wrap this video up, like I said I was going to do. So really with editing this video so far, I will say it feels very responsive and it seems like it's doing a significantly better job than even my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro, which Mind you, that one is only an eight gigabyte of RAM configuration, but the one thing that I noticed when I was editing video with not just that machine, but also the M1 Mac Mini that I had before I got the MacBook Pro, was that throughout the timeline or the storyboard timeline thing in iMovie that I use, uh, I would notice that the audio levels would constantly have to regenerate, and I'm not sure if that was due to the lack of available RAM or if there was something else with the machine itself that it was processing in the background with footage from my iPhone, which seems really unusual. That's like the first time I've ever had that happen. And something tells me that it's due to RAM. So it definitely makes me feel a little more comfortable knowing that I have 32 gigs in this machine. And I think if we were to even go open activity monitor, I saw that the RAM usage was well into the 13 gigs territory because of course it's unified memory which makes perfect sense. So I think I'm doing pretty well, considering that I was already doing pretty well with an eight gig of memory machine. And I think that was barely touching into the swap. Like, I mean, barely, like we're talking about double digits of megabytes, not even really touching triple digits anywhere close. And of course, when I was editing video, I always made that like the isolated application. Maybe I had Discord open in the background, but generally speaking, I just kept to doing the video editing by itself. So that way I didn't uh, incur any kind of swap cycles to the SSD if I could help it. So that probably helped out with a little bit of the performance, but it would eventually just start slowing down a little bit when I was really getting into a project. So I don't know if it's just something to do with the fact I had 8 gigs of RAM, most likely, but it could also be something to do with iMovie not being the most well-optimized program, if you want my honest two cents. But I mean, we can discuss that later. But as far as other usages, like web browsing is perfectly fine, although the M1 does that normally fine anyway. And uh, doing things with GarageBand, it felt snappy, although the M1 felt snappy as well. But I believe this can do quite a bit more with the software to find instruments and such. So I'll have to experiment with that, considering that I've put some music together with my MacBook Pro to put up on websites like SoundCloud and Audius and... I had no issues with the M1 just by itself with eight gigs of RAM. So I feel like this machine's just gonna be a breeze. No really, no real big issues there, obviously, uh, other than the software. And I may in the future do some more experimentation. I'm debating on potentially trying out DaVinci Resolve for editing. We'll have to see how that goes. But for the moment, I'm just gonna stick with using iMovie because it's what I have installed. It actually came preloaded with the machine, obviously. And uh, we'll just have to experiment as we go along. I'll have to get all my software loaded. I haven't finished it yet by any stretch of the imagination, but I did want to get this video out to YouTube as quickly as I possibly could because, well, I mean, this is launch day, so I'm not going to meet that sort of timeline with this video, but I'll get close enough that it's whatever, it's relevant. It's a hot machine in the sense of the popularity, but it just genuinely seems like it's going to be quite the unit for my workflows and potentially even more workflows as I continue to discover stuff that I can do with this machine. Not necessarily gaming. I mean, I have a gaming PC for that that's currently in sleep mode right now, but you get the idea. So with that having been said, um, until a future video where I can discuss some more thoughts and opinions on this machine, as well as probably some other things with Apple Silicon as a whole, then I will do that then. But I'll go ahead and finish this video off for now since, well, I'm just going to keep on rambling if that's the case. So hopefully you like what you saw. If you did, well then go ahead and click this button. If you didn't like it so much, well then the other way works too. Get subscribed down below and click that bell so you don't miss when I upload new videos. And with that having been said, appreciate you all coming to watch and I'll hopefully catch you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.